draußen am Bahnhof liegt eine alte Pizza. Oh, die ist lecker, die. Hallo, gut. Hey, Wim. You are fine? Yes, I'm good. There are many highlights in your career. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you started in 1978. Was living in a kind of a community. Yeah. And um, during the day we made music and in the evenings we had a pub. Yeah. So this was the starting point with the guys from Duff. At this time the band was five members. Yeah, with Chris Lohaas, is it? And Chris Lohaas was actually the sixth. And when they went to uh, London to start yeah. their big career, uh, Chris Lohaas mm -hmm. replaced me. And I stayed in Wuppertal and um, I made my first solo recording there called Inland. Mm -hmm. And I met these guys from this art gallery, Art Attack, Art Attack. And um, they were doing crazy stuff as well. They were having a band there and called Weltaufstandsplan. And I joined them and we formed a band, uh, Der Plan, then. Yeah. Right, in 81, um, when Michael Kemner left Duff as... Uh, Like uh, at that time there were four members and he left and there were only three left and he came as a bass player back yeah. to Dusseldorf and um, there was the first, I would say the first new wave super group of Germany, yeah. um, which was Thomas Schwebel. He came from Ziff yeah. and Frank Fenstermacher, he came from Der Plan yeah. and Michael Kemner came from Duff and yeah. Peter Hein, the singer, came from um, Mittagspause. Yeah. And so this was kind of the first super group in, in the new wave scene. And they were actually uh, the first one who got a, a major deal with EMI. Oh, yeah. And I joined them for the first record in the studio. And uh, I was not part of the band at that time, but I joined them in the studio and made the synthesizer yeah. track on Paulus Tod. So this first album of Hilfe was... Yeah, it's supposed to be one of the most important albums of yeah. from the German lyrics yeah. during the last 50 years, like the Rolling Stone voted it for the, the best German album the last 50 years. When I, when, I, when I think back, uh, let's say, uh, in the beginning, uh, there was some, something called the Neue Deutsche Welle, but that was some label that journalists put it on. Yeah, well, um, there was a magazine from a guy from Gelsenkirchen. He was a, a student of Josef Beuys. He had a, um, he had a magazine called the Neue Welle, the New Wave. Yeah. And it, and there was a, a movement of art and music at that time, which was pretty much very exp experimental and uh, very open for new mm. things. And um, this collided with a so-called independent music scene um, who wanted to um, distribute and made their own albums because the industry, music industry was not interested in this kind of experimental music mm -hmm. so we produced our own records and were independent at that time mm -hmm. and one of the big distributors uh, was a record shop in berlin oh. and he took the label die neue welle and just wrote die neue deutsche welle in front of that mm -hmm. and This was the label created, I would say, 1980. And yeah. uh, this was the label. And one of the things which happened in 80 was um, there was this young uh, student coming from Hamburg to us in our office. He was 15 at that time. His name was Andreas Dora. Oh. And his idea was to make a um, single, a seven-inch record with 
every label in Germany, every independent label. And he came to us with a song, a very childish song called Fred from Jupiter. And we decided to, uh, it was not that kind of our music, but we decided to release it. And this was one of the first big hits in the Neue Deutsche Welle. And so many people decided to make uh, childish German Schlager music. And this was the start of uh, Neue Deutsche Welle, I would say. There were a few great album, albums I remember, let, let's say, uh, Dove Decline on the Beuze. Right. Uh, yeah. Jumbo, the, uh, the, the first record, and of course, uh, Peter Lauter meets the Ausland. Right, Ausland was a little later. It was oh. 81, yeah, at that time, 81. But it still sounds like, it's, like it was made yesterday, I think. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I used to actually at that time I used technology which was not existing at that time. There were no MIDI at that time existing. And I found a um, crazy guy working on a digital sequencer. Mm. And um, it was, was called, I, we called it the whole thing, we called the Bronto Logic. It was like the Bronto uh, from the Stone Age. It looked amazing. It was a huge cupboard with a lot of cables. And it's, it was one of the first, I would say, the first digital sequence I ever saw. Mm. And I um, instantly I found, I saw the possibilities of that. Uh, and I wanted to make an album in a studio. And this was Ausland. This was the first album I did with the yeah, Bronto Logic with, a, with this huge uh, digital sequencer. Und Deutschland selbst ist gar nicht so hart, sondern einfach pervertiert. Er erinnert sich nicht an den Fischmarkt, alle tausend tote Augen in der Falle. Right, sampling at that time was not existing. We, our first sampler we bought, I think, in '82. It was the emulator one. Uh, oh. They had this nice ad in the American magazine, "Play yeah. a turkey," where, where you see a turkey on a oh. on a poster, and uh, you could sample the <laughs> of the turkey and play it on the keyboard. So mm -hmm. this was so impressive. We, we we had to buy this thing. We thought their plan is the perfect group for the emulator. One of the first albums made with Sampler was for us uh, Die Letzte Rache, which was oh, yeah. a film, film music. As you see my series of records, um, um, it started very industrial and electronic with Inland, and then Ausland was much more light and uh, more poppy, and Wunderland was the next one, which was uh, even more listenable. It was, I would say, I was very much kept captured at that time by the idea of intelligent music. I, I went into um, uh, into shops and heard this American music, which was playing all the time in elevators in in shops. And I said, there had there have to be a music which is m more nice and more intelligent than that. So I decided to make this album Wonderland, yeah. which is yeah, more 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 or less music. Yeah. The, the plan was, uh, was 50 50 percent with Frank Pence to 
Yes, Frank Fenster macht bei Moritz Reichelt, wo er paint, uh, uh, painter as well. Moritz yeah. is a painter and Frank also is an artist. Yeah. Uh, so this is more or less a collaboration between uh, visual artists and musicians. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was always our motto, more art into music, more music into art. And one of your latest albums, oh, let's say, with the plan was... Uh... How do you call it? A little bit uh, protesting against uh, copyright slavery. Actually, this was an album I was not involved. We stopped working as the plan in '91, oh. and um, after a tour, we we saw that actually at that time techno was arising, and uh, mm -hmm. we we didn't see any reason to continue our work so um moritz did this album with two other guys in i think 2002 or 2003 mm -hmm. and when about i think i think now seven years ago or six years ago andreas dorau uh, went 50 and uh, we were invited to play on his birthday mm -hmm. so this was the first time their plan came together for three songs on, on stage for Andreas' birthday. And backstage, everybody went to us and said, why don't you continue working with their plan? Mm. And this was the time where we decided, okay, we try one more album. Yeah. And um, this was coming out, I think, two years ago, two years or three years ago, I have yeah. to... It's called Unkapitulierbar. It was 2017, so three years ago. We did a new album and we made a tour. And last year, it was like actually the high point uh, for us was then uh, we performed one more concert in Japan. During this COVID uh, crisis, we mm, uh, looked in our archives and mm, and uh, did, did some research um, uh, about old material. And we found an um, album from 89 which we oh. never released and um, actually at that time in 89 we dis we wanted to make a show with three different bands yeah. performing as three different bands and yeah. one was catholic kitsch it was a um, totally kitsch pop band one was hombres nihilisticos like three old men singing very existentialistic songs mm. and the third one we we said we would like to make as a robot band called the Farnox. Oh. and um we did this tour but without the Farnox because the Farnox was too difficult to realize uh, to have three robots on the stage this was too much yeah, and we couldn't we couldn't do it so this music which was meant to uh, to perform live um, was in our archive never released and actually uh, two weeks ago we released the album yeah. called uh, save your software. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, the new album of their plan, yeah. which is old material from 89. It's actually six songs from that time because we had not more, more than these six songs. So we said, okay, we need a B side for that. And the B side is kind of a, is a, is the story of the Farnox is told by a, 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 yeah. an actor, quite famous actor here in Germany. And uh, three new songs, which we now recorded as what we think the Farnox should sound like today. The, the Attack label is still still working or everything is beautiful? The Attack label is not so much working anymore. I work as a producer and um, we have actually two artists left on our label. Mm. Um, one is Pascal Plantinga, the yeah. great guy from Hilversum, and the other one, uh, the other group is Rock Formation Disco Kugel. It's a band oh, yeah. from um, near Darmstadt. And these are the two acts we still release but um, more or less the label is sleeping because our releases with Pirolato and Der Plan is now doing um, 
Bureau B from Hamburg. Yeah. They are much more into promotion and into distribution than we ever could. Yeah, Bureau B, Bureau B is great. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, uh, yeah, like it's a, it's like a reinvention of crowd music. It's they started with re-releasing albums from the seventies, yeah. and then they started into eighties, and then they were releasing new albums from these old bands, and now they are releasing new albums from new yeah. new bands. And yeah. it's a it's a very good story of the label. And I I was invited uh, four weeks ago to make a compilation for the for the label, the best of Bureau B. Oh, yeah. What I as an artist think, and I was so amazed about this um, great variety of music from Augenweide, like the early 70s crowd yeah. music until really modern and uh, new electronics. I like the label a lot, yeah. Uh, uh, how, how do you see the electronic scene nowadays? Uh, they're still uh, releasing very good CDs, I guess, of England and Japan. But... Yeah, it, the problem in the moment is that we can't uh, perform live. Right. That's one one of the uh, one of the problems right now. We can produce music, we can make music. That's not the problem. In, yeah. We have a little club here in Berlin uh, uh, called Pop P O P. Um, It's a record store, and we do every every two two weeks. We do a streaming concert now. Yeah. Because the people are not able to perform live in front of an audience, but they can perform in front of an early mm -hmm. stage, uh, in early room. And we have this record store, and the record store is empty, and we have cameras. But the, the records are still coming, and they're also Phil Farben is, uh, and the book event is still there. Yeah, we released an, a new single from Fear Farben. Actually, we released now the um, A side because the process of pressing uh, the vinyl is um, you have to wait for four months because everybody wants to make vinyl right now. Yeah. So we uh, the vinyl comes out in I think in May, yeah. and um, we released the first side. It's called Supergen. Oh. It's the it's the A side, mm -hmm. and it's actually to, uh, we have here in Berlin. I don't know uh, wherever we have here in Berlin. We were on the playlist of the best radio station here, and uh, they played us like three or four times a day. This was really yeah. nice. And when the vinyl is then physically happening, we released yeah. the B side as well. B side is called Contact, and it's a song about to get in contact again. Impf mich auf der Straße, impf mich in der Bahn, impf mich vor der Kamera, jeder soll's erfahren. Impf mich gegen Studenten und Friseure aus Berlin, gegen Eigenleistung und gegen Ski Alpin. There is a new magazine in Berlin called Risiko. Maybe yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's a, these are nice guys. I know them from the. They came in the record store and wanted to make interviews with the guy who yeah. owns the record store, and then they made an interview with Moritz from their plan. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice guys. Yeah, yeah. Very ambitious. I mean, young people who want to come from, like the new fan scene. Yeah. Like a movement which was in the in the late seventies, it was called fan sign, yeah, fan uh, scene, and and they they are rising again. It's really nice. Right. Uh, and as well, I'm a producer. I produced um, which was coming out in 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 February, I think February, uh, uh, album from a Berlin artist called Stefa Stefa Schweiger. Uh, by the way, did did you have contact with Pascal anymore? Or was Yes, he will come in June and record some new stuff here oh, yeah. in my studio. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It's uh, always a big pleasure working with Pascal. Yes. Yeah. Well, maybe we meet something somewhere in the yeah. life. <laughs> you never know. We will. Okay. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you. Have a good cool time and uh, bleib gesund. Eh? Yeah, you too. Bye bye. bye. Thank bye. you. Tschüss. Thank you.